that time of year when more and more people start, start to get sick. But that doesn't always mean a trip to the doctor. Many will go online to look up their symptoms and get an instant diagnosis. But can you trust the results? I think we all know to take a little bit with a grain of salt, but Harvard researchers asked more than 230 doctors to come up with a diagnosis based on symptom descriptions. And then it compared the same symptoms, plugged it into WebMD or Mayo Clinic symptom checkers. They found doctors made a correct diagnosis is often. Now, obviously, it's a little different when you're presenting scenarios like this. If a doctor sees a patient in person, sure. sometimes you can see something on a face or you have a gut instinct. But still, this is pretty amazing. Doctors got the correct diagnosis first time. The digital platforms only got it right 34% of the time, Kim. That's one in three. That's not a great track record. No, and it doesn't really surprise me. I mean, I don't know anybody who's gone to try to Google their, their medical symptoms. You know, you've got a headache, a sore throat. It can come back saying that you have cancer, okay? Right, like, we've right. all had those sort of scenarios happen to us. And doctors are human beings. They reasoning and the... the um, but I, I guess I'm surprised a little bit by how how often the computers did get it right. I yeah. mean, yeah. they did it's get true. it right sometimes. Yeah, a third of the time they got it right. And when you ask them to give like the top three, about half of the time the computers were right. That's a pretty the good number in the mix of those mm -hmm. three. That's not bad if you're using those tools, I think, like most of us are, which might this be? Sure, or a, also, a guidance. And looking at not or diagnosis, but for looking at something like, okay, do I have the cold or the flu? What do I do from here? And my right. doctor actually has a visit that you can go all the symptoms and you can put it in there. It's for, mm. again, those basic things, but it's a fantastic way to not have to make an appointment. They call in my prescription down the street and it's that easy. Yeah, I know some people look and think like, all right, you're crazy to use a computer algorithm to try mm. to diagnose, but the reality is like a lot of us don't go to the doctor when we're sick. Yeah. We know we should. We don't want to step on the ski, or you don't want we to be want to told fix it that you want to too. fix it yourself. We just want to know what the problem is so we can go to the drugstore and get the over-the-counter mm -hmm. medication and be done. I mean, the truth is the way that these computers kind of run the analysis is not that different from how doctors do it in their head, right? You list off the symptoms. What doctors are doing is figuring out, no, it's probably not that, it's probably mm -hmm. not this. And then, you, yeah, and the computers are doing a lot of the similar thing. Well, I, this just, it struck my interest because just this week, Charlie Rose on 60 Minutes interviewed a robot, IBM's <laughs> Watson, oh. uh, about this very topic that this robot is now able to digest all these medical journals. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of pages of information, and then take uh, cancer patients issue and try to find a clinical trial for it. So I think that this is, a, we're going to be hearing a, a lot more about this as time yeah. goes on, and it's going to be a really good thing for everyone. I think everyone there's a way to use both mm -hmm. and to use them well. Yeah.